everlasting came, the steeds and chariots of flame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. The Lord called me before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have, for, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while, my cost was with the Lord. My reward with my God was honored in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you delight of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. My lips will tell of your justice. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me. Pay heed to me and save me. My lips will tell of your justice. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me, for you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My lips will tell of your justice. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust. O Lord, since my youth, on you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. My lips will tell of your justice. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth and I proclaim your wonders still. My lips will tell of your justice. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Hail to our King, obedient to his Father. He went
went to his crucifixion like a gentle lamb. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The time came for Jesus to pass from this world to the Father. While he was at table with his disciples, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, I tell you most solemnly, one of you will betray me. <clears throat> the disciples looked at one another, wondering which he meant. The disciple Jesus loved was reclining next to Jesus. Simon Peter signed to him and said, ask who it is he means. So leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said, who is it, Lord? It is the one, replied Jesus, to whom I give the piece of bread that I shall dip in the dish. He dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. Now at, now at that instant, when Judas had taken the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus then said, what you are going to do, do quickly. None of the others at table understood the reason he said this. Since Judas had charge of the common fund, some of them thought Jesus was telling them, buy what we need for the festival, or telling him to give something to the poor. As soon as Jesus, Judas had taken the piece of bread, he went out, night had fallen. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now has the Son of Man been glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself and will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow me now. You will follow me later. Peter said to him, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Lay down your life for me, answered Jesus. I tell you most solemnly, before the cock crows, you, have you will have disowned me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. You might have heard, I have said this before, so you, you might have heard in the sense of you were listening or you've remembered this term supernatural outlook. Sometimes it's one of the, it sounds like a, I don't know, maybe an abstract concept or a highfalutin series of words, supernatural outlook, was supernatural outlook. Go to this particular line in the gospel of today, uh, and it is verse 30. Judas has just left. Our Lord knows exactly what he's going to do. He's always known what he's going to do. However, uh, this is not the point I want to make. But he but erased from your minds that Judas was not free. Judas was free to actually um, repent of his sin before and even after. He was not made to do this by God. He chose to do this by God, by giving in to his own sinfulness. But this is what I want to focus on. Now has the Son of Man been glorified, and, God, and in him God has been glorified. He's come into a city, as I mentioned a bit on Sunday, <clears throat> and he knows exactly, he's going into basically a culture of death. The leadership is corrupt. There are some good men, so we shouldn't, you know, not everybody, but the vast majority of them are corrupt. The political leaders are going to reject him, so the priests are going to reject him, and Sadducees, many of the Pharisees, though not all of them. Uh, the civil authorities are going to reject him. He knows this. And the people will turn on him just like that and uh, be shouting, crucify him. Still goes into the city. Now he's with his uh, close 12, and he knows, he knows what is going to happen because there's no oops Oh, I didn't realize that. With Jesus. He knows they're all going to be, they're all going to leave him. Judas will betray him. Peter will deny him. And the others will run away. John will be the exception. But even that, I contend, was partly due to maybe the strength of our Blessed Mother or his connection with her. 
Now, if you want to be discouraged, approach this from a natural point of view. This is the recipe for discouragement, despondency, and despair. And this is a total loss. But our Lord doesn't see things from a natural, he sees things from a natural point of view, but he doesn't reduce them to a natural point of view. He sees things from the, from the, through the eyes of God, because he is God. He sees things from his Father's plan, from the plan that, that from all eternity, that this would result in his glorification. And so while he's actually heading into the pinnacle of his life, which will be horrible suffering, he actually understands very clearly this will glorify the Father and it will glorify him and it will open the pathway to eternal salvation. So it translates a very high and deep concept, reality and truth to our own personal lives. You and I, we can go throughout the day or just, you know, whether it's home situation or our personal lives, our, perhaps our professional situations, and sometimes they can really get us down if we look at them from a purely human point of view. It's critical, the saints teach us, uh, Jose Maria Escriva repeated this often, he's just one of the more recent ones, but all the saints possess this, a supernatural outlook, which they, they strove to see things from God's perspective. I just, I, uh, Father and I uh, went to see Cabrini yesterday. Really, it's worth seeing. It's, it's, I think it's quite profound. But, you know, the tenacity of the saints, the tenacity of the saints uh, is, is truly extraordinary. That's why we need to know more about the saints, but the human lives of the saints, because they're human beings. Sometimes they're, they're sort of written about in such highfalutin terms, it's ridiculous. Even the, many of the saints who read Lives of the Saints talked about these syrupy versions of the lives of the saints, and they said, no, this is not what it means to be a saint. It means you struggle. It means you, sometimes you fall down, and you get up, and you go to confession. It means you experience agony, like she experienced so much prejudice and racism, being a woman, the whole bit, I mean, just all of it. She never gave into it. She had supernatural outlook. She had supernatural outlook. And so Jose Maria taught this, and you and I need to cultivate it as well because many things can get us down very easily if we reduce them to a natural viewpoint, if we see nothing as serving God's purposes. And it can't get worse than what Jesus went through. So you and I need to kind of try and assess how, but sometimes we may not be able to figure it out, but at least to say, Lord, help me to have a supernatural outlook that you want me to do something in the circumstance, not just sit here and whine and moan and groan and cry in my soup, but you want me to act like a child of God. Like Mother Cabrini had every reason to just pack it up and go home. She had failure at every, the last thing she tried, the last thing. If the movie, I have to read a book on her yet, but the, and hopefully the movie is, is similar to, to her real life, hasn't been too Hollywoodized. But the last thing in her life is what actually brought about all the abundance of her apostolate. So you and I need to persevere and, and ask our Lord to help us have the supernatural outlook. This is just too easy to see things through human eyes when we need to pray for the grace to see things through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. I need a purificator, wasn't there? Purificator.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty, and rejoices in, the, in the, your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, encountered among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, as through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, to those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, deliver us from the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. I just encourage everyone to really pray for the catechumens who will be baptized at the vigil. There's 20 of them, adults. And, uh, I will, and then I'll baptize the children the following Saturdays because there's like 20 kids, <laughs> 20 children, which is wonderful, actually. Um, this is a real, and this is the first fruits of the 10-year vision. So it's really important that we pray for them, that God would uh, help them to be faithful and that we would help them to kind of be continually connected to our Lord and his church, you know, through the various aspects of our, of our vision here in the parish. So it's really important that we do this. Uh, and also just by way of this Cabrini thing, uh, when, when the, um, it's still in the theaters, but I'm pretty sure it's on its way out now. When it does come, uh, when it does come out in DVDs, I'll, I'll buy one because I, I, everybody should see this. Um, at least I'm convinced everybody should see it. It, uh, it really is very inspiring. It's important to see the life of a saint that I think realistic portrayal of the life of a saint. Some would disagree with me, but I don't really care. Um, this is a realistic portrayal of the life of a saint. We need to know that they did it with God's grace. You and I can do it too. So we need to be inspired by these brothers and sisters of ours. So I'll buy the DVD and then we'll show it to various groups in the parish. The Lord, the Lord be with you. May your mercy, O God, cleanse the people that, the, that are subject to you from all seduction of former ways and make them capable of new holiness through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. 363, verses 3 and 4. Oh.